Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Cambridge Union's first debate of the new academic year. It's a great privilege to welcome a real clash of titans tonight. Um, on one side we have Cambridge's world famous comedy group, Footlights, and on the other we have the cast of the hit for series, Made in Chelsea. <laughs> So, if you'll join me in giving a really warm welcome to the Cambridge Footlights, consisting tonight of Theo, Ali, Ahir, and Lowe, and the cast of Aiden Chelsea, Ollie, Frederick, Mark, and Francis. And <laughs> speeches will be roughly eight to ten minutes. Um, no points of information tonight, that's what the bar in Cindy's is for. And, um, Ali, would you like to take away? Thank you very much. Good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mr. President. Uh, you all look wonderful, by the way, darlings. Seriously, who, who are you wearing? Did you get a tan? <laughs> that, that is so interesting. We, we should totally have a drink sometime. I hate that bitch. <laughs> okay, so now this over. <laughs> uh, I appreciate all of you all coming out tonight after what I assume has been four days of solid drinking or, uh, as I like to call it, eating. <laughs> Tonight, I'm here to present two arguments supporting the proposition that this house would rather be in Cambridge than in Chelsea, and to urge you to vote with us, the Cambridge Footlights. But before I can do that, before you can make an informed decision, I feel like I should let you guys know a little bit about the background of the show, a little bit about Chelsea, a little bit about the cast, and you know, a little bit about the programme itself. So uh, now, uh, you're all intelligent people, uh, so I'm going to assume, assume you haven't seen the show. <laughs> uh, the, the, uh, and what better, what better way to get to know the place and the show than through its cast? And the first member of the cast that I want you to get acquainted with is uh, Mr. Francis Maximilian Ivan Christoph Buhl. Now, the thing about Francis Maximilian Ivan Christoph Buhl <laughs> is that, actually, sorry, do you mind if I just call you Francis Ivan Christoph Buhl? Okay. <laughs> now, the thing about Francis Ivan Christoph Buhl is that, actually, sorry, do you mind if I just call you Francis Christoph Buhl? Okay. Right, now the thing I'll say, as I was saying, the thing about Francis Christoph Buhl is that, sorry, actually, <laughs> do you mind if I just call you Francis Buhl? Okay. Now the thing about Francis Ball is that actually can I just call you Frank Ball? <laughs> the thing about Frank Ball is that <laughs> is that he's just like you and me. <laughs> Next, of course, we have uh, Frederick Ferrier. Is it Ferrier or Ferrier? Yeah, but I, I research myself. It's fine. <laughs> Don't trust the union. Uh, yeah. And a man who was clearly not made in Chelsea. Clearly he was actually uh, hewn from a single rock by the Norse gods. <laughs> and his hair was manufactured by the Laboratoire Garnier. <laughs> and when he dies, his perfectly formed skull will be Thor's favourite beer mug. <laughs> Next, we have the beautiful, the fabulous Ollie Locke. Now the thing about Ollie Locke is that over the summer, in the summer, he actually, uh, he actually broke up with his girlfriend and decided that he wanted to start seeing men. He decided he thought he might be homosexual. Um, but now, coming into the winter, he's actually, uh, he's actually dating a girl again. He thinks he might be bisexual. 
Uh, so the thing about Ollie Locke is, I think I'm right in saying he's as gay as the day is long. <laughs> and finally, finally we have uh, Mark Francis, who actually uh, asked me not to talk about him because uh, he doesn't like the attention. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, as you can see, what you're going to witness tonight is a de debate between some incredibly privileged people and some people off the telly. <laughs> so, so, now you know about the people who live in Chelsea, but what about the place itself? Well, in fact, I, prefer, I prepared a list of uh, three fun facts about Chelsea. The first fun fact is that uh, Chelsea is only uh, 12 kilometres square, which actually makes it the, uh, the smallest of the London boroughs. The second fun fact is that Chelsea has a population of approximately 159,000 people. And the, thir the third fun fact is that Chelsea was very nearly the fifth member of the Spice Girls. So there you go. The people and the place that make up Made in Chelsea. But what about, what about the show itself? Now, I really like the show, and I would urge all of you to check it out. Um, my favourite episode is that episode where uh, the two of them sleep together and then the rest of them bitch about it. Uh, uh, they're all different. They're all different. So, uh, so there it is. The people, the show, the place. But then, why would I rather be in Cambridge than in Chelsea? Well, I have two fundamental and very cogent points, I think, on this, on this point. Uh, firstly, I would like to ask, if the other side really would rather be in Chelsea than in Cambridge, then why the fuck are they here? <laughs> Secondly, <laughs> I would like to point out that now that Kate Middleton has become the Duchess of Cambridge, her name of course changes because the royals don't have surnames. What they do is they take their most high-ranking uh, status, their high, most high-ranking title, and use that as a surname, hence uh, Prince William becomes William Wales in official documents. And uh, Kate, of course, becomes Kate, uh, Catherine Cambridge now. So asking whether I'd rather be in Cambridge or in Chelsea. <laughs> is very, very much like asking whether I'd rather be Prince William or Prince Harry. Now, I know that uh, I know that Prince Harry is very popular, but I would actually rather be Prince William because I really like knowing who my dad is. <laughs> is that libel? Possibly libel. Uh, <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mr. President, our esteemed, well, yeah, our esteemed opposition, uh, thank you for listening. Uh, your Footlights team for the rest of the evening will be uh, made in Froome, Mr. Theo Chester. <laughs> made in his own mother's uterus, Mr. Lowell Belfield. And maiden test century, Ahir. Wait, where's Ahir? Ahir? Oh, What, what are you trying to say out here? What I'm trying to say is that I'd rather be at Oxford than St John's. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
All right, thank you. Right, don't, don't worry about it. It's fine. Oh, better comedians would have planned that. <laughs> Uh, finally, I have been Hillary Clinton and uh, Chelsea was made in me. Thank you. I've actually been in Chelsea all day, um, and I haven't actually seen you here. Um, I, rec I reckon you're probably at Girton, and you've probably run from there. It's <laughs> taken so long. Um, I did 8 out of 10 cats last week, um, which was a fairly remarkable situation. And right now I'm in that same situation where I'm equally as unprepared, <laughs> and with some incredibly talented men to my right and left. Um, I don't really know this. I, most of you don't know this, but I actually spent a year in this very building um, and had a wonderful time in Cambridge, um, and it's a very big part of my heart. Um, I'm not very funny, really. They edit me very well. <laughs> Seriously. Um, and I've got many memories of, of being here and I actually, I don't know if any of you saw it, but when I was back here about 60 years ago, I saw Kate Lawler do a debate, which was, remember she came out of Big Brother? <laughs> Slightly more famous than us. <laughs> um, she, um, yeah, so that was, that was an interesting one. And she actually did something so unbelievably offensive, where she kicked off her shoes and sat right here. And, I think everyone in the room was like, what are you doing? This is a bizarre situation to be in. You've just won Big Brother. Um, not an achievement in itself. <laughs> um, when, when I was here, I was very lucky to be a part, or to watch, the Varsity Ben and Jerry's Eating Competition. <laughs> um, a highlight of mine, particularly. Um, and I did get involved, and there was lots of Ben and Jerry's around. And, um, and I ended up the rest of the evening in your your lovely Union Lose, uh, uh, there we go, yeah. the, uh, the Union Lose, and uh, head so far down you could see Oxford. Um, <laughs> it's a true story, it's a true story. Um, now I do love Chelsea, that, that, that is true. Um, and I tell you that when I decided to to write anything or think of anything to say today, it kept on going back to Gardinias. And, the, um, <laughs> and I don't know why, but I remember, and I seem to recall, there was a kebab that you couldn't eat. And if you eat it, I think you've got it for free. Because it's so disgustingly large and definitely made of some sort of bush meat. And I did attempt it one day, and, um, and it wasn't well. However, um, <laughs> In Chelsea, we have something called Kebab Kid, and, um, which is a lot better than Loughborough, who have Hilal, was it meat you're looking for? <laughs> <laughs> um, my favourite of stories. Um, and yeah, Kebab Kid have lemon. When they ask you, would you like kebab? You go, yeah, and I turned up to a kebab. I kind of wanted gardenias in the end. I was like, I, I want that terminal sick again. And so I decided that I would, I, would, I, would, uh, I would go to Chelsea, go to Kebab Kid, and they asked me if I wanted a squeeze of lemon on my kebab. No, I don't want a fucking lemon. Um, thank you so much. I, I would rather have gardenias. But however, you have to believe, everywhere in Chelsea now has a kebab, which is now a le wonderful Lebanese restaurant, because it's very popular in London now to have Lebanese restaurants and to have Lebanese food. And you can't. Oh, that was nice. Um, you can't get a decent kebab anymore. Uh, you have the, uh, the kind of wrap situation. I'm talking about kebabs. I'm talking about kebabs. Um, I'll go on to my other point, which is a blank canvas. Um, 
the nightclubs situation. <laughs> now, I've worked in a lot of nightclubs. I've worked in nine different nightclubs. And, um, and I'm very much looking forward to going to Cindy's later. Um, <laughs> just, and uh, when I was actually last there, I snogged a, um, a Polish cleaner that worked in a hotel. Um, absolute true story. And I pretended that I, I just got over... I was trying to get over an ex. And so I felt that while she was... What was that? That's clever. Um, um, <laughs> Um, David. Um, anyway, no, she was she was lovely, and I pretended to be a, a member of the Stenders cast because I was so ugly back then, and um, I really was. I really was. It was. Uh, it wasn't pretty. I thought that I kind of went for the Paul Nichols centre parting situation, and. Um, it was very cool in EastEnders back in the day, and so I, I did pretend that I was a cast of EastEnders. Uh, it didn't work so well. Uh, no, I snogged her. I did snog her. Um, wasn't a highlight, enormously, um, of my time in Cambridge. Um, however, the nightclub situation in Cambridge is a lot different to that in Chelsea. Uh, I'll go back to the original debate. Um, and I think that we have some excellent clubs. Um, which seem to stick to their own names instead of going to what they were called 30 years ago. <laughs> um, still confuses me to this day, still. Uh, we're going to Cindy's. Where the fuck is Cindy's? No one knows. <laughs> the, the, the cab drivers, did you hear that? The, uh, the cab drivers have absolutely no idea where Cindy's is kind of thing or whatever. When I was here, I was like, Cindy's? And they're like, well, what was Cindy's? So I was like, well, I'm trying to be cool like the Cambridge people. <laughs> I call it oh, Polare, go on then, Polare. <laughs> um, and we always used to frequent... Is that the right word? Frequent? Um, am I saying that right? Yes. yes. <laughs> I wasn't made in intelligence. Um, <coughs> we, uh, I, um, yeah, has anyone ever been to raffles? Oh, there are knobs. There are nods. Some people have been to Raffles. It's a, it's a, it's a, a lovely club um, with a dance floor that kind of sparks up as you walk on it. It's quite remarkable. And um, drinks are £12.50 each. Um, and when I last got my, my lovely bank, send me a detail with a pie chart of what you've spent in the year. And um, to my disappointment, Primark was on it. <laughs> I didn't show the producers, um, and, uh, and one of them was Raffles, and that was, uh, and that was quite a moment in my life where I go, I really need to reassess the situation, so I've worked in nine nightclubs and haven't paid for a drink in five years, I'm still spending money in Raffles. Um, anyway, what else can I say? I'm not wearing a watch. <laughs> All right. Um. <laughs> no. Um, I say no as if I know what I'm going to say next. No, no, no. I, I really don't. Um, so I think, Chelsea, I would actually... The, I See, I keep on going back to wanting to stick up to Cambridge, which is why I shouldn't be standing here. It's not very good. I mean, I, I, I went swimming in the can when I was in, in Cambridge. And uh, it was a lovely experience. I think David Williams at the Walliams is still on the loo right now through swimming in the Thames. Um, and uh, is incredibly ill. Um, <laughs> you know, I might retire now. I am now single, I hasten to add. <laughs> Sorry, what was that, sweetie? <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. It's good luck, like, all this. <laughs> Who's all this? And uh, if all this wants to say hello, I mean, we met as well. So now, where is all this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, all this. We met before. Yeah, yeah. In Bellare five years ago. You're a cleaner, right? <laughs> Um, 
I am actually going to retire now, and I'm going to say thank you so much, and it's a massive privilege to be here, and I fucking love Cambridge. And <laughs> I don't, I honestly, I think I'd rather be in Cambridge. <laughs> Do I think that Ollie's opening remarks were false? Yes. <laughs> Did I write this speech assuming that he would make an argument? <laughs> yes. Am I, as a way of upping my working class credentials, talking in a ridiculous and affected Cockney accent? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> But that is not the point, you audience of diamond geezers. <laughs> the point is, when I go up the apples and pears, would I rather be in Cambridge than in Chelsea? The long answer, ladies and gentlemen, is yes. <laughs> the short answer is ye, yeah, or just the letter <laughs> Now, some of you may have noticed my use of apples and pears, which is, of course, Cockney rhyming slang for Tony Blair. <laughs> this sort of street jingo jive talk may not be the sort of thing that the cast of Made in Chelsea will be aware of, what with their lack of jelly deals and salt-of-the-earth poverty. <laughs> so I'd like to bring in my debate not with confrontation or friction, but with the hope to win them over with a gift, wonderful and generous. Cockney rhyming slang is famously used to disguise the names of things from the police. <laughs> I've made my own Cockney rhyming slang names for the cast of Made in Chelsea. <laughs> so that they'll be able to get away from the exploitation and tax evasion charges that will dog them for the rest of their lives. <laughs> Cringe at how nice I'm being, OMG. <laughs> um, the first one. I went to meet my friend Perfect the other day, and Perfect was being a top legend. Perfect equals Perfect Derrier equals Mr. Frederick Ferrier, <laughs> who is sitting on his Perfect Derrier right here in this chamber. Uh, and then I've got, um, I was playing a spot of rounders with Gurley on Tuesday. Gurley equals Gurley Little Shawl equals Frank Ball. <laughs> um, I went to a jamboree with my friend Enormous recently. Enormous equals has an enormous cock equals Ollie Lott's friend Mark Francis Van <laughs> Incidentally, the three words that most people use to describe Made in Chelsea are girly, enormous, and whatever the other one was. <laughs> All I do is present you with the facts, ladies and gentlemen, and it is up to you to make your own judgments. <laughs> Many in this chamber, will be, at this point in the proceedings, will say, in what way are you arguing for the proposition that it's better to be in Cambridge than in Chelsea? To that, I would say this. This house would rather be in Cambridge than in Chelsea is an interesting proposition, yes. But it leads to a much wider proposition. This house would rather be in Cambridge than have stupid, silly-looking faces. <laughs> which, <laughs> which is what we would have if we were anywhere but Cambridge, let alone Lamesville, uh, um, I mean Chelsea. <laughs> Now, I'm not saying that the cast of Made in Chelsea have stupid, silly-looking faces, but I am heavily implying it. <laughs> so, I say to the cast of Made in Chelsea, don't listen to the people who see you on the street and literally stop whatever they're doing so they can say, Oh, I prefer Made in Essex! Or whatever it's called. <laughs> The only way is Essex, I got it wrong. Um, they're just ignorant. 
like a dog talking about politics, or Mark Francis Van Daly. <laughs> Okay, no, they're, no, they're awful. Though. I hate them. They're lovely. Um, okay, uh, if you're currently not on side with me, which I can only refer you to a psychiatrist if that's the case, uh, I'll now demonstrate the value of Cambridge. Continuing on my non-confrontational line, um, I would like to offer some gifts to our ambassadors from Chelsea, so that they may understand our ways and customs, and perhaps be coaxed round to the Cambridge way of life. Bring out the gifts. To Mark Francis Vandelli, we Same present a Saint. <laughs> to Mark Francis Vandelli, we present a Sainsbury's Basics Macaroni Pasta Meal. <laughs> Each piece of pasta has been hand-weaved by the women folk of Cambridge. <laughs> and the people of Cambridge have feasted. The people of Cambridge have feasted on the macaroni pasta meal for three score and twain odd four. <laughs> to Frank Ball. What can you give a man who, have, who has everything? We give the gift of empathy. This is not just made in Cambridge, but all over Britain, and is a rare substance in Chelsea, thus increasing its value. <laughs> to Frederick Ferrier, we offer the gift of a half-eaten lion bar. This is because I tasted the lion bar and realised I didn't actually like the lion bar. <laughs> and to Ollie Locke, beautiful. Hungry Ollie Lock. <laughs> Thigh grabbingly gorgeous Ollie Lock. We, uh, we gave you the gift of one imperfection. are horrible. Um, so now I've offered my kindness and generosity to the cast of uh, Made in Chelsea, I'd like to see if they can come up with a notion that's obviously better than our kindness and generosity in Cambridge, which... Uh, let's see, let's see. Anyway. Good God, this is terrifying. This is like walking into a modern-day coliseum. It really is. Um, okay, so my first point is actually about uh, Ollie, who's a very sweet guy. Uh, and I, I, well, to be honest, when I first met Ollie, I hated him. Uh, he, he turned up to our shoot. It's a very camp flamboyant guy wearing these, uh, wearing these uh, Union Jack trousers. And then, then he, he, uh, he tried to come out to me. And I was a little bit, I was a little bit disappointed, to be honest, my self-esteem, you know, nosedived after that. But uh, Ollie's one of those guys, I don't know if when you, when you study for your exams, you have all these people that say they haven't prepared anything. Ollie told me he hadn't prepared a speech. So, come on, Ollie. Exactly. He, my but he, yeah, but he, <laughs> he lied. Yeah, he's, he's very good at ab-libbing. Um, then I'd like to thank, actually, David for inviting us here. Uh, so if we can get a round of applause for David, please. <laughs> David actually paid us all 150 cash to do this, and he's taking us to Cindy's afterwards, where he's promised uh, promised whores and drugs. And isn't that right? <laughs> uh, but also, please, please vote for David. Please vote for David. He's a great guy. Um, 
Right, so uh, yeah, this uh, this speech is going to be nervous. I, 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 there's going to be more silences in my speech than there is in Made in Chelsea. Uh, <laughs> but actually, if it's, if it's my one thing I'd really like to do today, has there ever been a Mexican wave up there? I'd love to do that at the end. So if we can think, if we can think about that towards the end, I'd really love to get that going. <laughs> Right, so, uh, I keep looking back at this and I don't really know why because when Francis and I were on the train together we thought we'd try and do something but we ended up just drawing a fish. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a, it's a sort of GCSE art project all over again. Right, uh, yeah, what else have I got? I really don't have much, so I'm going to have to... Because he didn't, he didn't actually tell us. I mean, I've, I really hoped I'd get one of these one-minute warning things. But I, don't think, I think it's going to be, yeah, five-minute warning. Um, so, yeah, I'd like to say, sorry, I, initially your sort of debate was more of a flirting thing. You just sort of, I mean, I, th I, mean, I thought it was a, you know, he was actually playing footsie with us under the table initially. But yeah, can I say they were, they're, they're very nice. <laughs> yeah, as in, I, I had the pleasure of sitting next to David, and, you know, it's a great company, but these guys actually didn't say much. They were quite rude because they were so into their speeches, but obviously that pays off, as you see with these guys. And, um, yeah, and also I just wanted to thank you for the Frederick Perrier thing. I don't really know who, who organised the, uh, who organised that? But you. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have to say for yourself? Do you not watch Made in Chelsea? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, come on, as, as he said, I do, I do agree with him, you know, like, who really watches the show? Come on, you're at Cambridge. Embrace that for once. I actually tried to get to, uh, tried to apply to Oxbridge, but my parents advised me against it. Which is really low, exactly. So I went to Bristol instead, and uh, and then ended up doing Made in Chelsea, which I got a first in. So <laughs> thank you very much. Anyway, um, I don't really have too much more to say, but uh, exactly. How, what can I can I do? Can I just hang out here, or do I have to? Can I do a can I do a catwalk? Yeah. <laughs> She has to say here. Okay, so. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll take my top off if I get a Mexican wave. How's that? <laughs> yes, don't listen to her, she's just the president. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Start, starting from you, and I'll pay you with my top off. How's that? He's looking interesting. Yeah? Okay, uh, go, go, go! Keep going. Thanks very much. <laughs> I'm really doing this, huh? My parents will be proud. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's it from me. Thank you very much. To the next speaker. I should say, um, ladies and gentlemen, and Mr. President, that um, despite my instinctive hostility towards the opposition over here, there is one member who I feel deserves to be given a little slack. Over here we have Ollie Locke, Frank Ball, Thor, and you. <laughs> you. <laughs> Mark Francis. <laughs> now, I don't know if anyone here realises just how great Mark Francis actually is. He is a trooper. Isn't that right, mate? <laughs> He's a grafter. He's a trooper because he may not be the most high-profile member of the cast of Made in Chelsea. He may not be involved in a vicious little love triangle between Spencer and Kaggy, but he is a bloody grafter, this man over here. <laughs> now, 
There's a little saying called, um, the journey, not the arrival matters. And in the case of Mike Fritz over here, um, he's an absolutely fantastic bloke. You know, he's a self-made man. In fact, did we know, um, did you know, that he, um, he was lost, lost by his biological parents, and he was found many days later crying under a bush. And what his adopted parents did is they, they picked him up, they held him in his arms, and they decided to call him Mike. Uh, because Mike is the Greek for, uh, I have no name. Um, <laughs> Now, now he's risen up in the world, he's moved on from poverty, he is Jana now. Grazie, Jana. <laughs> She's his slave. Um, <laughs> he's, even, he's even made it to the position of extra. Oh, okay. Well, he's now even an extra or made in Chelsea. In fact, he's the extra. He's the only extra. He's the go-to the go guy. He's the fall chap. He is the steady Eddie. He's like the old dog on the rug in the corner. You know, he's a bit whiffy, but he's loved. <laughs> in an unnoticed way. And the thing is, even though that I love that Matt Freeze managed to gain this amazing position on Made in Chelsea, despite the barriers that have stood in his way, his role on the show makes me angry. And it's because when I compare his amazing biography to what actually occurs on the show, I realise how little actually happens on Made in Chelsea. Yes, unfortunately, Martin Freeman, your life is more interesting when you're not on camera, when quite frankly, when you're not in Chelsea. I mean, look, if I just read out what actually happens in the first series of Made in Chelsea, I might be able to make my point more explicit. Okay, so... <clears throat> Kagi liked Spencer. Spencer liked Kagi. Then Kagi meant Spencer's girlfriend, Funda, um, fondant, uh, foundation. Uh, then Kagi was suspected by fundamentalist of cheating. Then Kagi was confronted by fundraiser. Then Kagi invited Trust Fund out with all the gals to clear the air. Then Kagi found out Spencer broke up with Fondled. Then Kagi went to Cannes with Spencer. Then Spencer called Kagi he liked her. Then Kagi said she felt that she it was too soon because he'd just broken up with Fondled. Then Kagi got the cold treatment from Spencer. Then Kagi got very cross with Spencer for this and told her that nothing would ever happen between them. Then Kagi said that she was moving to New York. Then Kagi shot a baboon in the Safari Park episode. Then Kagi retired from New York for the second season. Then Kagi. 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 It's monotonous. Monotonous. And the monotony makes me cross. And you know, I could say many, many, many things about how this monotony makes me so angry. But what I think I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to express through the medium of dance. <laughs> Many of you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. 
I struggle to believe that we went to the same school. It was very expensive, I'm told. <laughs> that really was quite low. Um, <laughs> yes, um, I wonder why you drew fish on the train. Why did you draw that beautifully detailed fish on the journey? It wasn't boredom. You weren't just convinced that um, Chelsea was just better and you didn't really need an argument at all. This would be like shooting fish in a barrel. Right. Okay. Essentially, I don't think, ladies and gentlemen, there is terribly much of an argument. But we'll try, I guess. I think we've already won. Doesn't matter. Sadly, I don't have any smart tricks. I can't dance. I might try later. It will be vaguely embarrassing since these shoes are perilous. I broke my legs down the stairs and bougie in these, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> we didn't need to mention that. Anyway, moving on. A clash of the titans. Why is this a clash of the titans? Actually, it's extraordinary thinking that most of us have probably been to the same schools. You've probably all been to Chelsea, and we've all been to Cambridge. Uh, what, do we? Well, I hadn't been before today, but maybe, maybe there's a reason. <laughs> Just saying. Um, I'm curious. Where do people shop here? It's extraordinary. I found a Reese. <laughs> Definitely no Tom Ford concession. <laughs> Just saying. Where do you eat? Where do you eat? We had sushi. There was no fish in it. <laughs> in fact, the waitress was surprised when I asked whether she had anything with fish in it. Slightly worrying, but then that probably says a lot about Cambridge. Or maybe it's just me. Um, you might be surprised to find that Chelsea has, for centuries and centuries and more centuries, been the home to artists and intellectuals and, frankly, very intelligent people, many of whom have studied in Cambridge. I just asked myself why they ended up living and, well, eventually dying in Chelsea. It's a curious matter, probably because they all left Cambridge. Possibly because of the nightlife. You see, I've tried to stick to the point that we'd rather be in Chelsea rather than dancing. Or taking my top off, for that matter. <laughs> but then no one really wants to see me topless. I don't blame them. Um, do you honestly believe that <laughs> I'd rather not I tried? It has terrible effects upon people. Uh, do you honestly believe that Made in Chelsea can depict an accurate picture of those who live in Chelsea? Do you honestly believe that this is everything we do? Do you hon <laughs> Well, as it happens, I do, bizarrely. Does that come as so much of a surprise? Yeah. And, and, and I do have a slave. That's also true. But she loves me. We get on very well. In fact, she's the only person who gets on with me. Are we surprised? Probably not. Um, you're also wrong in, uh, in numerous facts, actually. Uh, the borough of Kensington and Chelsea, because it is the borough of Kensington and Chelsea, not the borough of Chelsea, is one of the largest in London. And, um, yeah, it's not one of the smallest. It's actually bigger than Cambridge. Or that, actually, that's probably wrong, but, you know, I, I, I gave it a shot. Do you have anything in Cambridge? Are there theatres? Why are you all here? Do you have nothing better to do, people? It's Freshers Week. You're supposed to be having fun and, I don't know, drinking. And you're all here, empty-handed, wearing wreaths. It's appalling! There is clearly nothing to do in this place, that's why we're leaving tomorrow. We checked into a hotel, which is not a motel, it's not a bed and breakfast, it's not a, it's not a hovel, it's a hole! It's <laughs> disgusting! And I'm told it's the best place there is in Cambridge. Okay, thank you for that. It was very kind. But I'm told it has been paid for, which is very exciting. <laughs> Yeah, I'm still curious as to how many of you will end up in SW3. I fear quite a number of you, if you're intelligent. <laughs> if you get a first, you'll be buying your first property soon before prices get even higher. It's extraordinary that Chelsea has never suffered during any recession. House prices always remain high. I wonder why. Is it because of its desirability or because of cunts like us? <laughs> Probably because of people like us. And extraordinary enough, you continue to watch our television program. Is it really just to laugh at us? Yes. <laughs> but then you won't struggle, will you, because you live in Cambridge, so you're used to laughing at people. <laughs> uh, gosh, there's just so much here. I've been writing and writing. In fact, my hand now hurts. I'll need a manicure tomorrow. 
we do those sort of things in Chelsea. <laughs> and then you end up looking <laughs> idiots like us. <laughs> oh, extraordinary. Uh, yes. Right, what else can I say? Very little. I think, you know, my point has more or less come across. Kensington and Chelsea is a marvellous place. We're all lovely people. If you take the time to speak to us, we'll try and be friendly. We might, we might not be, but we'll try. We always try, don't we, darling? <laughs> always. Um, we're also quite frank, um, and we don't necessarily like putting people down for no reason, because, well, we don't have to. We live in Chelsea. We're all the same. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm deeply troubled, uh, partly, well, partly because one half of me wants to thank you for winning us this debate, uh, but, but partly because the other half of me, you know, I, I, I sat one away from you at dinner, you seemed really nice, and I hope that was all an act, uh, so I, I feel quite, and Chelsea Football Club! <laughs> Chelsea Football Club. <laughs> Cambridge City Football Club. <laughs> Cambridge United Football Club. Chelsea Football Club, Cambridge City Football Club, Chelsea Cambridge United Football Club, Chelsea Cambridge. Now, I don't know much about sport, but I make that 2-1. Now, <laughs> oh dear. Now, you might say to me, I, it's, it's ridiculous that you're arguing in favour of this motion that uh, kind of you would rather be in Cambridge than in Chelsea because you're, you're absolutely right, Mark. I have no experience of life in Chelsea. Right? That's why I, I grew up in London. I've lived there my whole life, but it's a world away from me. Right? I have no experience of it. You might say, I ah, hear. You know nothing of these people's ways. Right? You know nothing of these people's customs. You know nothing of these people's sexual proclivities beyond the fact that you assume they're lubricated by the tears of the weeping poor. <laughs> but there is something there is something I know. <laughs> so I do know something of the two places. I know something of Cambridge through beginning my final year here and having lived here for two years. And I know something of Chelsea through watching the Fly on the Wall documentary series, Dispatches Made in Chelsea. <laughs> I do know something. I thought as the final member of the proposition, it was my duty to make a point in favour of be being in Cambridge as opposed to being in Chelsea. And I thought that I'd do this by detailing to all of you, some of you who will just be starting your time at this university, what I truly believe to be the single worst thing about living in Cambridge. Right? Because the nature of a Cambridge term, of a Cambridge life, as some of you will only be beginning to discover, as some of you will have discovered over the last few years, or maybe just the last year, is it, it's, it's a bubble. Right? It, it, is, it is a bubble. Everyone is incredibly busy, everyone is incredibly focused on the community that they're around. They're connected to their own bubble. Be your bubble, your year, or your college, or a team, or a committee that you're on, or anything like that. Right? You're part of a bubble, and it does encourage a certain degree of insularity, and it does like, it, it's very, very difficult to be private in any way, and everything moves incredibly quickly. Uh, it, it's very, very difficult to pause or stop as much as you would like to. <laughs> Frank, we're going to come to you! <laughs> There's emotional resonance to this. Use your gift of empathy. <laughs> right, building it back up. 
and and that it, it genuinely is the worst thing about being in the, in this town at this university. It, it, it makes it very very difficult. But would I trade it? Right? Would I trade it for the life that these four men sitting opposite us have? Right? I there's very little I would trade to be frank. <laughs> It was. I think mean, mean, we could get along famously if we were both completely different. Right? <laughs> well, not really me, mainly you. Right, but... <laughs> Would I trade it to have the life that these men have, the only life that I know of Chelsea, the life of a cast member on Made in Chelsea, a member of that Fly in the Wall documentary? Would I change it? Not in a second. Right? Because I have realised something that I don't think many people have realised about the four men sitting opposite me tonight, which is that they are all being ruthlessly exploited, right? Ruthlessly exploited by E4, right? Because they too live in an insular, closed off place filled with people who in one way or another are incredibly privileged, right? And they too kind of experience the petty trivialities of everyday life that contribute to the wider tragedy of the human existence, right? <laughs> the, the soured friendships, the lost loves, the bitching, the backbiting, Right? And for us, it's part of the Cambridge bubble. And for them, it is filmed and put on national television. <laughs> right? Can you imagine how upsetting that would be? Right? Can you, can you, no one could actually want that. Right? Which is why I have come to the conclusion that these men are being ruthlessly exploited by E4 and they are nothing more than slaves. <laughs> who have been forced into their position, because no one, no one could possibly want it. No one could want the inane, vacuous, everyday chatter of their everyday life broadcast on national TV on an unscripted documentary. Right? It has to be unscripted, because if you could script it, you'd script it better. <laughs> At the end of the first series, Spencer declared his love to Kagi, who informed him that she was leaving for New York. He was told by his friends to chase after her at the airport to catch her before, he, before she left. And he got there in an empty airport with a departures board that signified that she'd already left. Right? And he had to sit there alone in his misery. Alone, but for 20 members of a camera crew <laughs> who, after a few minutes, up sticks and moved their equipment so they could capture his sorrow from a better angle. <laughs> Who in their right minds could possibly want something like that? Right? And it was you, Frank Ball. <laughs> it all started with you. You who was forced into it. Right, two years ago, Frank Ball was approached by the commissioning editors of E4 and forced into it. They had images of him or whatever. Right? <laughs> he was forced into this situation. They forced him to make a fly on the wall documentary chronicling <coughs> the lives of him and like minded 20 somethings living in the affluent borough of Kensington and Chelsea. He was forced into it. It definitely wasn't the other way around. He definitely didn't approach them. He obviously didn't. And don't let anything that anyone says in an interview or reality tell you otherwise. <laughs>
thank you, I hear. Well, like I say, thank God we're leaving tomorrow. No, 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 I, I actually do enjoy Cambridge. Well, um, as, as Fred uh, uh, illustrated with the, um, the fish, uh, um, which I actually drew, if that gives you any idea of how uh, unprepared I am for this, but, uh, you know, I, I'm uh, very much of the opinion uh, that you should be prepared to be unprepared. So I'll, uh, I'll wing it and see how it goes. Uh, I, th I thought it would be best to go last, um, so I could uh, absorb some of the arguments of uh, my uh, fellow cast members. But I, um, yes, I, 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 I'm, inc I'm incredibly bad at um, listening. Um, but I, I think Ollie, the uh, Cambridge sycophant, <laughs> Frederick, the Cambridge Fashion, Fashion Week, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and I think Mike Francis was the only one who actually had uh, a solid argument. No offense, guys. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I really liked uh, Cambridge when I came here, f I think it was four years ago or something like that. I came here for an uh, Oxbridge interview uh, lesson, uh, or an Oxbridge interview course, and um, taught by Cambridge professors, got rejected from Oxford, so obviously what a lot of good that did me. But um, I know I, 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 do, I do enjoy Cambridge. I do enjoy Chelsea. I don't actually, surprise, surprise, live in Chelsea anymore. I live in Marlborough, which I'm enjoying. <laughs> I, I know. I, I, I had to get over the rash when I first went there. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, I, but you know, you just, they, they've, they've, got, they've got an ointment for it for us uh, ex-Chelseaites. Ex um, but, you know, I don't really think there's much between Chelsea and Cambridge. I think there's actually quite a lot of similarities. Um, you know, I, uh, you know, I do, I do apologise. I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm sort of winging this, but uh, you know, I, I, uh, yeah, I think, I think, I, th I really do think that, uh, you know, like, like obviously, s you know, you guys have Cindy's, we've got Public, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, you know, you guys have Fry and Laurie, we've got Spencer and Hugo. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, we know where the, uh, uh, the bar is set. You be the judge of that. <laughs> um, but no, I think exactly. You know, we've got Boris bikes. You guys have punts, which I'm hoping to go on at 3 a.m. A drunken punt ride. Who's with me? No. Bitch, <laughs> <laughs> don't. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, but uh, what else was I going to say? Yeah, I, I'm, I, I realized how unprepared I was when I saw. I hear passionately practicing his uh, dramatic entrance at the dinner table. <laughs> uh, I, re I, yeah, I realized I was screwed at that point. Um, but it was a very moving speech I hear. I really do, uh, do wish I had gone to Cambridge after that. Um, it was, it was, no, it was riveting. I, I, you know, I, I, uh, I do, but I, I do like, like, um, uh, I follow in, in Frederick's words and say thank you very much for uh, for uh, inviting us here. I mean, it is a true honour to, to be able to come and uh, debate at the Cambridge Union. And it is actually, it, it was prior to any invitation on my 100 uh, things to do before I die. So uh, I would, yeah, I'd like to, well, round up Mark Francis' arguments and... <laughs> And this, and uh, and say, I I would I would actually rather live in Cambridge. Stay in Cambridge, away from the love of my life. 
such a sexy, 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 sexy,